Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Jessica Donovan here, and today we're continuing with our infant topics. We've been covering some um, infant topic topics over the last couple of weeks with our nutritionist Mel. We talked about colic and we talked about introducing solids. Today I am doing a solo episode on reflux in babies, one of the most common conditions and issues and challenges that we see in babies is reflux. And you know, contrary to popular belief, there are, you know, other avenues that you can look at and go down uh, apart from medication. And I'm going to be talking about why that is something that you want to be thinking about in today's episode as well. So what is reflux? Reflux is when the contents of the stomach are brought back up into the esophagus and into the mouth. It's sometimes referred to as GORD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Both babies and kids and adults uh, can all experience reflux. It is more common in babies. It's very common in adults as well, but that's not what we're talking about today. But it's more common in babies for a few reasons. Number one is the the sphincter muscle that separates the stomach from the esophagus is not yet fully developed in babies. Babies also have a shorter esophagus, so it's less distance for the stomach contents to travel up. They have an immature gut, so the functions of the gut overall are still being developed. And lastly, they spend a lot of time laying on their back, which doesn't help, you know, with gravity helping with helping that digestive function. So reflux can present in a whole lot of different ways in babies. Some will have really obvious symptoms and others will have what's known as silent reflux and only show subtle signs. So silent reflux is often missed or misdiagnosed as, let's say, as a, as a good example, colic. So it can take a little while to get an accurate diagnosis. But some of the most common symptoms of reflux in babies include bringing up milk after a feed, being fussy or unsettled after a feed, arching their body, their back after a feed, Slow weight gain or failure to thrive can be a symptom of reflux. Respiratory symptoms can also be present, such as coughing or wheezing. And then there's the gassiness, the foamy bowel movements, burping, hiccups, and a sour smelling breath. The thing is, some babies won't be bothered by their reflux. You know, they might spit up and bring up milk after a feed, but they don't experience pain or discomfort. My daughter was in in this kind of camp. She used to spit up a lot, but she wasn't upset by it. Um, In this case, you may not need to do anything about their reflux. But if your little one is uncomfortable, uh, if they're in pain or if they're experiencing some of those symptoms, uh, you you probably do want to to intervene. We don't want to see them miserable and, you know, it can cause – it can just be really tricky for parents to to deal with those those kind of symptoms, the unsettledness particularly. So there are several sort of medical treatments or interventions that doctors will suggest if your baby has reflux. And the first one is reflux medication. In my opinion, like so many um, doctors jump to this one too quickly. Of course, it has its place, but there can be some downsides to reflux medication. So the reflux medication that is prescribed for babies is also known as protein pump 
inhibitors. Um, that's one of the most common classes of medications that babies are prescribed. Um, and, and there's other reflux medications. They're often a, a first port of call for reflux in babies. So what these medications do is they reduce the production of stomach acid, which can reduce symptoms. However, this really is a Band-Aid solution and has some negative implications. So I do want to say that the relief that these medications can give can be, you know, really life-changing for some parents and babies. Uh, So it does have its place, but it doesn't address the cause. Most babies don't have reflux because of an overproduction of stomach acid, and we're going to get into some of the, the common causes of reflux. So reducing stomach acid can also have negative effects on overall gut health because we need stomach acid to break down proteins. It's the, you know, it, it's the um, first part of the digestive processes or one of the first parts. Of course, digestion starts in, in the mouth. Um, and, and so the, the stomach acid is then breaking down protein. And so these sort of medications reduce that protein breakdown and that protein digestion. And there is some research to suggest that using reflux medications is linked to the development of food allergies. I'll link to that research in the show notes if you want to take a closer look. This, is, this does make sense because, um, you know, when proteins aren't being broken down and digested properly, they can pass across the intestinal wall into the bloodstream and set off an immune response. And so both food allergies and food intolerances and food sensitivities can be the result of that that incomplete breakdown of protein due to the lower levels of stomach acid due to the medication, if that makes sense. So you do want to think twice before putting your baby on reflux medication. The next, uh, I guess, uh, medical intervention that's really common is feed thickeners. So feed thickeners may be recommended for adding into formula or expressed breast milk. It can be useful for those who are failing to thrive because it can help them to, to put on a bit more weight. But unfortunately, these feed thickeners are highly processed. They're often made using corn-derived starches. Um, and if there's a corn intolerance, it can make symptoms worse. So if the feed thickener is making symptoms worse, that points to the fact that there's some sort of an intolerance or sensitivity to something in the feed thickener. And then oh, this one this one um, really drives me crazy, this, this piece of advice. So um, many babies do experience an improvement in reflux symptoms when solids are introduced, when solid foods are introduced. This occurs when the muscles around the stomach have strengthened as part of the next developmental stage. However, this is the piece of advice that drives me crazy. Some doctors do recommend introducing solids early with babies that are struggling with reflux, but there is absolutely no data or evidence to to show that this will help. Um, And babies with reflux often have insufficient or struggling digestive systems. So introducing solids can actually uh, cause more problems than it solves. So let's have a look at what you can do. Some of the things that I've had really good results with, with um, the the clients that I've worked with as a naturopath, um, there's plenty of, of different things that we can do that are natural and gentle and really effective. So the first thing to think about is, you know, what is causing the reflux in the first place? And this is a big part of where, you know, modern medicine and traditional medicine um differ is that we are really all about uh, in in traditional medicine and and naturopathic medicine, delving into what is causing the problem as opposed to giving that sort of Band-Aid solution. So um, we want to be we want to be delving into that, which you can do with with the help of a practitioner. And we have um, Mel on our team, who's who's a clinical nutritionist and um, has 
you know, some really good experience with um, helping babies with reflux and colic and, and those sorts of things. So she's a great person to help you get to the underlying cause of what's going on with your baby's reflux. So I want to just kind of go through some of the common causes of reflux, Those some of those um, common underlying causes. The first one is feeding issues. So we want to make sure that we are, um, you know, getting some support with breastfeeding if our child has reflux. We can consult with a breastfeeding expert, a lactation consultant, uh, consultant, or um, even the Australian Breastfeeding Association is a great place to start for some extra support with breastfeeding. Uh, problems with latching are common for babies with reflux. So are tongue ties and lip ties. Uh, in fact, there was one study of a thousand infants that were all on reflux medications um, and they were assessed and treated for tongue and lip ties. And afterwards, after that treatment um, and, and being assessed, 52% of the babies, more than half, were able to come off their reflux medications. So I think that research points to the fact that, you know, getting on top of feeding issues and getting some really good proper support with breastfeeding can make a big difference to reflux. Also, positioning of your baby can make a big difference. So, you know, if your baby is prone to these refluxy type symptoms, keeping them upright after a feed so gravity can help the contents get further down just that simple kind of um, process can make a big difference. You may need to hold them up using things like slings or baby carriers or rockers to help. Um, but as I said, you know, I highly recommend you get some support with breastfeeding um, if your baby does have reflux. The next thing is to identify allergies and intolerances. Baby with, babies with reflux often have some sort of food allergy, intolerance or sensitivity. So identifying and removing these trigger foods from mum's diet if she's breastfeeding or, you know, it, there might be an ingredient within a formula, for example, that the baby is reacting to. So the most commonly linked problem when it comes to reflux and food intolerances and, and allergies is cow's milk protein allergy and or cow's milk protein intolerance. One study found that a third of babies with gourd or reflux were also diagnosed with cow's milk protein allergy. Um, if if this is the case, then there's usually some other signs of dairy-related issues. So they could include things like changes in bowel movements, including loose bowels uh, and sometimes constipation as well, mucus or blood in the stools, green stools, tummy pains when babies bring their knees up towards their tummy, particularly after a feed, um, that can indicate that there's some sort of, of of you know issue going on with the gut and can be linked with cow's milk protein problems. Uh, eczema is really common when there's cow's milk protein allergy or intolerance. Nasal and respiratory con congestion and dark circles under the eyes. So um, it's worth trialing a dairy-free approach even if your child doesn't have these extra symptoms if they have reflux because, uh, you know, the presentation of, of these kinds of conditions can really vary. So if you're breastfeeding, you may need to remove dairy from your own diet, obviously, and it's just, you know, a good idea to trial a four-week um, dairy-free diet and monitor symptoms. And of course, uh, some support in this area can be really helpful. So you can consult. Um, we, we've got some, some information about uh, booking a consultation via our website, and I'll make sure that is linked in the show notes if you're feeling like, oh, that's just such a you know, a big, a big thing for me to, um, to do. It's a big challenge, particularly as a new mum, you know, doing a food elimination, uh, can be really tricky. So getting the support of a practitioner can be a really good idea, but I do want to let you know, for those of you who are listening and, and thinking about trying this yourself, remember that dairy free means removing all dairy and milk products, including things like lactose free milk. Um, 
because lactose is the sugar part of the of the dairy um, and the it's there's often an issue with the protein part the casein so lactose free is often not enough it can be for some for some babies um, but don't think lactose free means dairy free there can be a bit of confusion there but things like milk and yogurt and cheese and um, chocolate with milk in it ice cream custard uh, butter are all examples of dairy food so you want to be eliminating those from your diet um, and of course, baby's diet as well. Uh, most formulas are dairy based, so you may need to switch to a, a um, non dairy based formula. And you want to check your labels that there's no dairy included in things. For example, you know, cheesy flavored crackers, for example. Um, and I just want to also say that that it, there's no, it's not always dairy that is the issue. So other common problem foods for reflux include soy. This is really important to consider because you don't want to be switching over from a dairy-based formula or dairy-based food to soy-based food and the issues are still there. And it's not necessarily because there wasn't an issue with dairy. It's because there's also an issue with soy. So try and avoid soy at the same time that you're trialing dairy free as well. And wheat and gluten and corn and eggs are also really common food intolerances and allergies in babies that can be causing reflux. I do not recommend that you try eliminating all of these foods at once as a new mum with a young bub. Um, so you, so it's a good idea to start with one and the most common uh, problem food is dairy. So you can start there, as I said, or get some support from a practitioner that can help you determine what is the most likely uh, food intolerance or allergy for your bub. But as you can hear, food allergies and intolerances are huge um, and something that's really overlooked when it comes to a lot of a lot of GPs when it comes to reflux. Um, the other thing to consider is bodywork options. So I have I've heard lots of great success stories for reflux with things like chiropractic, osteop osteopath or osteopathy, cranial osteopathy can be really great as well. But just make sure that you find a practitioner who has extensive experience working with babies. And then other natural remedies can be really supportive for reflux as well. We will often use things like herbs and probiotics. However, these need to be tailored by a health practitioner to ensure best results for your baby and to make sure you're not giving them anything unnecessary. So if you're, um, if you're wanting help in that area, you can book a consult uh, with one of our practitioners via our book an appointment page. And lastly, I just want to mention that a really important step for managing reflux is to build that healthy and happy gut. Uh, most babies with reflux, are, you know, do have some dysfunction within their gut. Um, and if you want a good place to start when it comes to gut health, because I know it can be hugely overwhelming, the area of gut health, we have a free resource for you, which is our free gut health ebook. And I'll make sure that the link is in the show notes. So this isn't this ebook isn't specific for babies but it gives you a really good foundation in terms of knowledge on the gut in a really sort of simple to understand way so i'd highly recommend you have a read of that and if you're a breastfeeding mama you can start implementing some of those strategies in terms of you know different foods and things to eat to improve gut function because that is going to have a flow on effect on your baby's all important gut health as well I really hope that this episode was helpful in pointing you in the right direction if you have a refluxy baby. Um, and I would really love for you to send this episode on to anyone who you think could benefit from this information as well. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day or night, whatever it is, wherever you are listening to this. I appreciate you tuning in so much and I will be back next week with a new episode. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. 
head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com, for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.